Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Of course, she would not sit this one out. No, of course I wouldn't. Of course, this video was her idea. Of course it was. Uh, because she is she is one of the only people who still care about uh, Netflix Shira. I don't only really care. I just like to 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 make videos about it. I care about the original Shira. Um, but I also think it's absolutely hilarious that uh, people obviously are listening because I'm the one who brought the prom issue. Yeah. And then there's a whole article on the Mary Sue over it. We're going to, yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of, a lot of Shiri, Shiri stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we call them over here. People oh. are like, what's a Shiri? It's like, oh, it's, it's a toxic Shira fan. Just watch the comments after we post this. It's just, it's hilarious. It is like compiling on like we, like they give me care for one half time. You don't even read their comments. <laughs> But it's just that they're, 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 you're skimming through. You see all these people like flipping out and it's hilarious. How very dare you? Not like a cartoon show I like. That's supposed to be for kids, but it's not for kids as we'll discuss. Well, that's yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the push for Shira season six. We're going to talk about the uh, fascination with prom in cartoons that are supposed to be for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, that they keep telling you that you, you know, you couldn't have a problem with it because it was for children. Yeah. And and uh, we're going to talk about where I guess this this fascination with prom comes from. It seems to come from adults who miss their proms. And uh, I, but I thought this show was supposed to be for kids who haven't experienced prom yet. Right. But, uh, you know, but it's not really. It's for them and their friends. And then we'll talk about Noel Stevenson, who continues to apologize for the uh, Bo So joke. I mean, and honestly, it was. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think I look, I, I it was a slip up. I think you apologize or whatever. It was fine. And you move on. But the fact that she's kind of like groveling right now these people are going to eat her alive yeah well, she, you know and they're going to they eat their own they're going to throw it back in her face at the worst possible time you know they are that's how this works well they've, she, they've called karma i mean gosh this chick has been on twitter for years throwing shade at, at dudes for no reason that, that was fine until you know they all turn on you yeah so you kind of sometimes you reap what you sow yeah so uh, <laughs> I didn't even with, get that with, now. With, oh, you have to explain it because I'm slow. When you cultivate a certain kind of audience that is offended by everything, mm -hmm. then they will eventually be offended by you and you too will be canceled. But uh, speaking of cancellation, Shira and the Shiri, Shira and the Princesses of Power is done as far as we know. Now, people keep pushing for a season six of the show. Don't know if that's going to happen. Don't think that's going to happen. I don't think so after what happened. You know, I, and first of all, I think there's, you know, maybe certain, you know, showrunners behind this push for a season six. I think after what happened, that's probably not happening. Yeah. It um, wasn't before then. But. I think it's complicated because of the situation with Mattel. They've got two new He-Man shows coming out. Mm -hmm. They have new She-Ra action figures coming out. That were and, classic She-Ra. That are classic. And they seem to be just sort of distancing themselves from the show. Now, never say never, because sometimes cartoon series get another season years after mm. one season ends. But I, I'm saying, I agree. Princess of Power, She-Ra Princess of Power, another season, but based on classic She-Ra. Based on actual She-Ra, not whatever the heck this was. Yeah, there we go. Do a season three sequel to the Filmation show. Right. To the, to the show everybody like, really liked. Yeah, that would be pretty okay, cool. I'll say the majority liked. We'll, put the, it, we'll leave it at that. Because some people really do like this other show. And that's okay if you like this other show. I, You know, you're allowed to like it. You're allowed to not like it. The problem is no one's allowed to not like it. That is, yeah, according to the Shiris, which are the toxic element of the Shira fandom. Now, just because you like Shira, I want to reiterate... Uh, just because you like the show or are a fan of the show, that does not make you toxic. What makes you toxic is prowling around on Twitter all day, insulting people for no reason other than the fact that they didn't like your ship, they don't like your cartoon show, they yeah. don't like your drawings, uh, they don't like your attitude. They I agree with that. You know, that that is where, you know, and it, there is an overlap, I think, with other cartoon series that have gone down a dark path. Pretty much, Like yeah. Steven Universe, Voltron, uh, even Avatar back in the day where the shipping becomes front and center. Right. And you tend to attract uh, uh, a bunch of, well, Annie's from Misery. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> shitty behavior, shitty behavior, doesn't matter which side you're on. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll we'll move over into the shipping. Oh my god, this because, is so bad. Because this is where this is where things are headed uh, here. Okay, here's how biology works. No, you're not. Allowed to say that. <laughs> so I'm like, um, don't you know they have a cute picture of Adora and Catra's baby? 
So. Cloning. That, that's about the only way you're gonna get that. I, um, yeah. Now, oh, hey, here's another, here's another insult. Why Noel Stevenson's Shira needs an RPG? You know who's getting an RPG? He Man. He Man. <laughs> He-Man's getting an RPG. That's why they're saying it, because He-Man's getting an RPG. I'm sorry, guys. Either there's a surrogate father, um, or one of them is more than meets the eye, uh, but there's that's not going to happen. That's Transformers. Uh. <laughs> that's that's what they're going to do with Transformers. Uh, yeah, so um, it's getting a lot of mileage because it's a, a shipping drawing. Of course it is. How can they... How can they take one image on Twitter and make an entire comic book? Because it's CBR resources article. Uh, she probably got paid about three to five dollars. I've for this. seen them take one interview and make it in like for one interview and then break it up into like seven articles. Yeah, I've seen them do it. This is uh, they're not even paying. I don't think anybody's paying attention at CBR anymore. I think they're just like just post whatever you want as long as we get clicks, mm -hmm. as long as we get hits. So this is what we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about, and then we'll talk about Noel Stevenson uh, apologizing profusely and why that is probably a very bad idea uh, at this well, point. Well, she should apologize, but not like you know. But the problem is, is when you over apologize, then it will be expected every time uh, you make any kind of mistake, whether real or imaginary, that you you throw yourself down on the floor and wail uh, for forgiveness, and uh, if they feel like it, they feel like it, they'll forgive you. But they want a season six, right? So they'll probably, they'll just kick her out and bring somebody else. In. Yeah, that, yeah, they'll have no problem replacing her. <laughs> One of them wants to be the showrunner. Right. One they'll, of have the no problem or, they'll have no problem replacing her. So we wonder what the deal is with uh, prom. Because for some reason, all of these new cartoons have prom episodes. Right. And then the Mary Sue must have been listening to our videos because we're the only ones that really point that out. Yeah. And, and here they come with their article. Yeah, so the deal, as I understand it, as I understand it, and we had some people in the comments on our, our last Shira video uh, inform us in 90 paragraphs or less. Of, oh, I don't even read them. What, what the importance of prom is, uh, apparently to the LGBTQ community, if, if you're uh, queer, you didn't go to prom. Well, that's your choice. So now you're going to prom... You're going to prom via via cartoon shows. Yeah, so you still didn't go to prom. You're just making your cartoon OCs go to prom. I know gay kids that went to prom. I you do. know gay kids that went to prom. I know I do. And then and and where we live, it's not exactly it's a more of a rural area, so take that as you will. And I know for a fact that there were kids that were couples that that were LGBTQ that went to prom um, recently here, and it and it was fine. Yeah, so, you know, maybe this was, well, I mean, a lot of these showrunners are young, so we're talking just probably, you know, six, seven years ago. Now, uh, I'll tell you, I did not go to my prom because I thought prom was stupid. I know a lot of people who didn't go because they thought it was stupid. <laughs> and if you knew me in high school, that would totally fit the personality. I was just like, prom is lame. I'm not going. And I won't even say he would have gone with me because um, if we had met in high school, we probably wouldn't be married. We wouldn't have gotten along very well. No, because he would have been snarky and I would have told him where he'd go. I was, I was, when I was a senior, I was rather unpleasant uh, to be around. Not that I'm terribly pleasant to be around now, but... I think you're okay now. I'm okay. But I've from what I hear out. about you in high school, it was funny because when his friends met me, I was not what they expected me to be at all. They envisioned someone much bitchier. Hard to believe as that is to some of you people. I'm actually quite nice normally. Most of the time, I just call out crap when I see it. They thought I was going to wind up with like some goth girl or something. Yeah, or, I'm the opposite yeah. of that. Uh, anyway, that's that's us. Nobody cares about us. No, right? but I'm just saying. You know, I get, I get, I, I get that you didn't go for why. I mean, I, I, it is probably a problem. I, I, I am sure that's a real problem that exists. I'm not going to belittle that because I don't think I, I think that there probably are a lot of people who don't go for that reason. Um, I don't think that's fair. I think they should be allowed to go if they want to. Um, some schools might have rules against it, which is dumb, and they should let them go if they want to. Um, so I, I get that that is a problem, and I can see where they're coming from there. I really can. However, a couple things here. One, then, then don't make your characters all focus on prom because you didn't, because whatever reason, not going to prom stunted your maturity at that level for whatever reason, you're completely upset by it. 
And two, you keep going on about how if you, that these shows are for the children, not for adults. And, and you know, like with She-Ra, it was well, not for you to fap to. It's for the children. It's for the children. It's for the children. No, it's not. Stop lying. It's not for the children. None of this is for the children. Fap or flick. That's it's, right. It's it's all it's, up to you. It's up to you. But none of this is for the children. <laughs> And this is for these 20 somethings who missed the, you know, their prom or they're trying to promote, you know, a character that's like them because it's to feel better about themselves or whatever. And they're making it for them and their friends. That's what this is about. It has nothing to do with the children. Yeah, I think that's one of the chief the chief complaints I have about, you know, animation now is that you're not. There's so many showrunners. They're not creating shows for their intended audience. They're using uh, multi-million dollar budgets as a form of therapy yes. for themselves. And I'm sorry, I'm very sorry if you had a shitty go of it in high school. Uh, I'm Most people did, I gotta tell you. I had a very shitty go of it in high school, but again, that's that's my problem. Don't talk about now it. Now you need to make a show all about high school and how you had a shitty go and you need to relive the best high school ever because you didn't have a good high, good high school experience. I had a horrible high school experience, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't talk about it, I don't dwell on it. I'm just like, wow, that sucked. Uh, hopefully our kids will have a better time of it. And, sadly, um, no, because everything's shut down. Yeah, yeah, sadly, no, because, you know, kids aren't... There might be some school. hope for Pinky Boo. Yeah, but, um, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it is it is a strange thing that we've we've noticed in the last couple of years. And again, it's, it's the target audience. It's, we're not creating cartoons for kids. They claim it's for kids. I think a lot of the pitches are... You know, again, when they're pitching shows to these executives, a lot of them might not even realize what they're green lighting. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we got this character that we got this IP. I don't just think so. I think they, they know what they're green lighting because they think that these buzzwords are going to get views. Because because like back last like two or three years, LGBTQ plus has been the buzzwords. Now it's going to be, you know, people of color yeah. moving forward because, you know, you guys are all over. Now it's people of color now for 2020. Um, so I, I think it's about, you know, well, you need to be represented. Representative, or I'm going to go to the internet and scream and tell everybody how um, biased and you know you are because you're you know it's all straight white men's faults and everything else. So I think I think they completely understand what they're doing. They just didn't realize it was going to bite them in the ass that no one was going to buy stuff or watch it. Yeah, well that's that's just it. I mean it it because these shows are not being produced for kids really, um, and the parents are watching them and being like, "What? What's going on? Why are these shows not for kids?" And you you ask a lot of ch like, you know, Pinky Boo. She doesn't. And I know we're gonna get comments. People are gonna be like, "Oh, you just poisoned your daughter against it." She doesn't like the new Shira show. She we gave her the option. No, we told it. her she could like it if she wanted to. She, she doesn't like it. Yeah, she likes Miraculous Ladybug. Oh, loves Miraculous. Ladybug. Loves Miraculous. Uh, she she loves anime. She loves old school Shira, old school Sailor Moon. I mean, but she just was not into the show. We're like, go ahead, go watch it. Well, she I'm going to say something that's going to probably get us in even more trouble, but I figure, <laughs> hey, we're on a roll. Um, here's the thing, too, guys. When you have all these shows, representation matters. I agree 100%. You need re representation in the shows. However, the reality of the situation is that most kids are not going to be on the spectrum. Normally. They're just not. And so what's happening is uh, every show has an LGBTQ lead is a little bit unrealistic and a little bit weird. And uh, I think it's starting to it's starting to become more about, you know, I get you have to you want to make sure you reach out to kids that are like you and that understand that it's OK. And, you know, show them there's positive there's, there's a positive future or anything else. I get, I get that. I, I support that. I, I think that kids need that. But what I'm saying is that not every character has to be this way. And not every main character of every popular kids show. Well, that's because they want the shippers because the shippers watch the shows. But, you know, we're, we're seeing like you look at the merchandise. It doesn't sell. Steven Universe stuff did not sell, even though Steven Universe was you know relatively popular. As far as I could tell, it was a popular show. But it was popular with the people that didn't buy the toys. Right. That's just it. It wasn't popular with kids. So they started making Steven Universe toys for kids and now i'm not saying that like the t-shirts and stuff aren't selling i mean that kind of stuff probably would that would appeal more to teens and adults but they were making toys for kids and my god those things sat, sat on shelves at walmart's for like a year before they just blew them out i mean you could get the greg universe 
like Mega Blocks or McFarlane uh, brick van for seven dollars. Mm -hmm. It might even be less by the time they got rid of. They it. were they I think were it was less. They were selling the figures for like a buck a piece. They have blind bags. We were buying blind bags uh, for Pinky Books at the time. She was watching Steven Universe. We're getting them for less than a buck a piece. You know, the stuff didn't sell. It, it just, it doesn't sell toys, you know? So, you know, again... But now you're going to get them. Well, every show doesn't have to sell toys. Yes! Every show that wants to stay on the air <laughs> and remain profitable needs to be profitable in some way. Why is Mattel doing a doing a 180 on She-Ra? Because they're like, the She-Ra dolls didn't sell. But the He-Mans are flying off the shelf. The He-Mans are flying off the shelf. And you know what? When they bring classic She-Ra back, she's going to fly off the shelf, too. Mm -hmm. She absolutely is. Probably more so than the He-Mans, because she it was harder to get some She-Ra stuff than it was He-Man stuff. Because she's got brushable hair. Yeah. And she's got a she's got a brush that doubles as a battle axe. And you know what I'll do? I'll go get her and I'll make her go to prom. <laughs> She'll go to prom. That, Actually, that'd be a video. Oh my she god! She goes to prom. She goes to prom. I've got He Man. She could go with her brother, but that'd be really weird. That would be too weird. That'd be really weird. I, I do have a bow and a shear that's classic. You know, they could yeah, she would be, you know, but he'll be wanting to date He Man the whole time. So you know. <laughs> Everybody knew Bo, Bo was gay. Uh, yeah, I was like the, you know. Everybody knew. Nobody cared. Nobody, nobody cared. But they kind of made it that way in the filmation show because in the uh, in the comic books that came with the dolls. Um, in fact, I was I was rereading some of them because I've got the big Dark Horse book yep, you got me. It's got bottom, like, yes. All of the He Man. I'm that awesome. You are that awesome. All the He Man Shira comics, and it was Catra and Adora fighting over Bo. Because Bo was basically a Ken doll, and they were fighting over him, and his heart would beat for a door, and that's why you'd take the little plate off, and you had a little button you'd push, and his heart would, would beat. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a weakness because somebody could does just your like, heart beat for me. It does. Well, we can't really see it because that'd be wrong. Isn't that kind of morbid? Like you take this dude's armor off, and then somebody could just like do an Indiana Jones, just like reach in and grab his I'm heart. I'm just saying, and... it's like you know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, it does. does your heart beat for prom? I could give a shit about prom. <laughs> Uh, I don't care about prom at all. I don't regret not going to prom. I didn't go to my own graduation either. He but, didn't. Um, I went to prom. That one I regret a little bit, but not not prom. I went to prom, but I just went with a bunch of friends. And it wasn't like, you know, we had dates or anything. And you know what? And so we went with a bunch of friends. And, you know, I don't miss it, care, regret it, anything. It, you know, I went, but I went with friends. And you know what? A lot of people do that. Because they even make comments about, well, some people go with their friends and go, I'm like, yeah, a lot of people do. Why does everybody... More well, fun that way. Well, this is the thing. Like, look, okay, so they're talking about uh, media outlets such as Teen Vogue, which I think is, is pure propaganda, by the oh, way. Oh, Teen Vogue, It's all gosh. politics. Um, they highlighted prom's problematic history, showcasing classism, sexism, and racism at prom. Okay. Uh, now, the article Mary Sue goes on to say, while many in the LGBTQ plus community do not get the same traditional teenage blueprints as our straight counterparts. Um, I, I, you just said you didn't go date. I didn't go. I didn't go with a date, no. But they're saying in general. And I and, guess. So now I guess they're using all these TV shows to make up for it. The ones that you keep screaming are for the children. Well, that's it. They're clearly not for kids. Uh, I, think, I think the double standard is just it's, it's infuriating. All right. So let's <laughs> let's go. Let's go back to this, because this is a thing. When you make a faux pas, the correct thing to do is apologize and move on. Well, she did. Which she, she did, did apologize, and and I don't think it was a malicious thing. I really I don't, don't think it was malicious. We well, said that back then too. I mean, it wasn't a really good thing to say. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, why did you say I, that? I I think it was more. Now, for those of you who don't know, just a real quick uh, recap. Uh, Noelle Stevenson, showrunner of Shira, was on a live stream with some of the other people who worked on the show, and they were joking about how Bo had uh, several brothers and the. The brother named So worked the fields. People took that to be a racist joke the way it was done. She produced drawings that they had thinking it would help her case. And people were like, no, now he looks like a slave. That's not helping. And all hell broke loose. And she apologized. And now she's still apologizing. This is where I think intent matters. Uh, and I don't think it was her intent to be I don't offensive so. or to anything like that. I don't think it was. I mean, I am defending her on this one because I don't think... I mean, it was a really dumb thing to say. And I can't believe she didn't think that people would be offended by that because even if it's stupid people are offended by everything so of course they're gonna be offended by that um the difference is like we'll say stuff and not care she she's been struggling or pushing so hard to act like she's like you know the great person that cares about all um except for straight white guys because she used to attack them on twitter like right and left um but you know i think the people were overreacting yeah but that again it just it it 
you know, it's it, it kind of is karma because this is the audience that she courted. That's for years. Our, that's our point. That has so, been our point. Uh, how ironic when you kind of build a platform of people who are all about cancel culture and all about being offended, how ironic it is. Actually, it should be expected that they're eventually going to turn on you for something. Because everybody makes mistakes. Someone, you're going to slip up at some point. I mean, that's just the way it is. So she did apologize. She put the, the uh, image out there, and this is so, and people are like, you know, he looks like a farmer to me, but other people are like, oh my God, that's so racist. He looks like a slave. Uh, so, so you know, black people can't farm. Yeah, black people can't farm. Isn't oh. that racist to assume that the black people can't farm? But you know, it really um, was kind of like, why would you say that? <laughs> you know, on a, on the knowing knowing your audience. In this case, they're like, well, I don't get why that's a bad thing. Here's my here knowing the audience that was cultivated, it was a bad thing to say. Yeah. Let me clarify it that way. Well, that's that's just it, and that's again, this is sort of you know these shows. This is who. Uh, the audiences for these shows, you know, mm -hmm. you cultivate people who are uh, perpetually offended, you know, adults and they're not kids. They're perpetually offended teenagers and young adults and they're watching these shows and then they don't get their ship. They don't they think you said something out of out of turn. Uh, they're going to come for you. They're perpetually offended, uh, you know, older adults, too, that are flipping out about this stuff. Uh, yes. But yes. here's the thing. Um while this was going on, a little backstory too, uh, there was an artist who had done a pitch that didn't get picked up because of shows like Shira, because of shows like what sounded like High Guardian Spice, and the push for diversity not being as successful as studios would like, they wouldn't look at her show really because, and it looked really good, they wouldn't look at it because um, it was diverse, even though that wasn't her focus. Mm. Um, she tweeted at us, and she tweeted at Noelle Stevenson. Okay, we covered it. Uh, I don't think no. I don't know if Noel Stevenson ever thinking about it, but at the time she hadn't. Um, so that's really ironic now when she makes that joke and then with her comments moving forward. Now continue. Uh, yeah, it is, and, and we joked. We actually, we actually joked. We joked about when we first saw the writing room. They all had the matching pink jackets. We're like, look at that diverse room of mostly or white all women. white white women uh, working on Shira and Chuck Austin, who's not in the picture because he was out getting coffee. Because we can't have a stinky old middle aged man. He was actually doing the work, but then saying he was getting coffee. Anyway. He was not in the picture because he was in the studio doing the damn work. That's right. Well, they were all taking. They were all getting milkshakes. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> getting milkshakes. Chuck Austin was. Doing Doing all the work, um, so yeah, she kept the apology. I might as well offend as many people as possible. Let's go for it. Go for it. Uh, this so is last, what I'm doing in regards to this for a while until they announce the season six. Yeah, that'll be one. They'll be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. So all right. So Noel Stevenson, I'm sorry to fans of Shira who are hurt and betrayed by my comment. I'm sorry to black professionals who feel unsafe in the industry as a result of my comment. Okay, You're, well, if you feel unsafe in the industry over that because of Noel Stevenson, she's like what, she five said, five. She said so. I'm like, uh, okay, that's a little far. <laughs> so. Oh my God, is someone privileged enough to have a platform? And okay, this is look. I'm gonna tell you flat out. She is uh, in love with the fact that she has a platform, mm -hmm. right? She's been for years. Nothing new here. Yeah, she is like, you know, basically she thinks she is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Everything going on in the country right now. And the most important thing that everybody's talking about is Noelle Stevenson's joke. Most people are like, who the hell is Noelle Stevenson? Right, but people didn't even know or care. Um, and, you know, it's, and you're only, you know, we don't know it's that that was the most important thing in her world. But she does, she Wally always was kind of obsessed with her platform. She has a platform and a leadership role. You know, yeah, she, I'm still trying to figure out how she got that one when she didn't have the experience to have it. That's a whole other story. There are simply no excuse for mistakes like this to happen. I'm taking serious action to do what I can to repair the harm. I'm currently taking this time to take a hard look at my privilege and remedy the gaps in my anti-racist education. And I'm working with, uh, I don't know who this is, as an anti-racism consultant to craft a plan for the future <laughs> Both personally and professionally. Wait, what the hell? How much are they getting paid to be an anti-racism consultant? Oh my God. She's <laughs> just like... Yeah, I give them credit for thinking of a cool way to get make some money. I'm not here to make empty... I can't... This is embarrassing to read. I know. Like, I, I get you screwed up. Everybody screws up. But this is like above and beyond. Holy shit. I am not here to make empty promises. I know that forgiveness is not a given and that trust once broken is not so easily repaired. It was a joke, but okay. You, you're, you can't joke with these people. Nonetheless, I'm laying out my commitment for the future as follow. Oh my God, she's actually yes. laying out a battle plan. Yes. 
I commit to hiring black talent at every level and to create a safe and positive environment where employees of, of color's voices can be heard and where they can thrive. Well, that's awfully assuming of her that she's going to be in a position to hire people. That's assuming you're going to get another show. Well, maybe they'll hire you. Shouldn't they be above you? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, by her own her own retraining. That's right. That's right. Why are you assuming? Noelle Stevenson, why are you assuming that at your next gig, you're going to be in charge? Yeah, I'm sorry. That that was a joke, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> so. Is it because you're white and privileged? You just assumed that you were going to be in charge, Noelle? Anyway, in addition, I commit to hiring sensitivity readers and anti-racism consult. Somebody got her ass chewed out anti-racism consultants to ensure that careless bias does not slip through and that the work environment is a safe and positive one for employees of color. This is, this is some serious groveling. Over I, a, a, a joke over about a joke. so. I ask for the support of any executives and studios when doing so. Well, it's even worse because the person who made the joke wasn't even her. It was one of her people that made the joke and she just repeated the joke on 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 Twitch. I think it was Twitch. It wasn't it wasn't even her joke. <laughs> it wasn't even her joke. It was a secondhand joke. I mean, I, I still can't believe that she thought she, that she could just blurt that out and it was fine. I mean, I knew I knew as soon as she said it there was going to be a, a whole shitstorm to follow. I would not have I would I would have not have said that out loud. But knowing the people that follow her, uh, but at the end of the day, it was not malicious and it was it was a joke that she didn't even make. Anyway, continue. When hiring power is not in my hands, I commit to boosting the profile of black talent. But she didn't. I'm the one who went and, and we were the ones who went and took that young uh, that young uh, artist who was phenomenal and, yeah, and posted about it on our thing. She wasn't even answering. Because she's Noel Stevenson, she's in a leadership role, and she can't be bothered. And I've heard from let many uh, let women, lead. many women of color, that are in, in animation, that they have run into all kinds of issues with the women in animation groups and not getting a chance and opportunities that that, that the same as that women aren't people of color are getting um, before this incident. And why wasn't anything done then? That okay. light skinned white writers room. Yeah, it's mostly white lesbians. Let's I mean, honest. I'm gonna be honest. That's it's, what light skinned lesbians mostly. It's mostly. Mostly. I mean, we're just going to be honest here. I don't I'm care gonna, anymore. We're just going to be honest. We're going to be honest. Uh, and that's not a knock at anybody for anything. I'm no, just saying it doesn't, it, you know. The observation is it's mostly white when lesbians. When they were saying about diversity, it wasn't very, it wasn't really diverse. Uh, that was, that yeah. was the point. I don't care whether who you sleep with or what you identify as. I'm just saying you all are women. You all are light skinned and you all, they all, a lot of them seem to be. Uh, yeah, LGBTQ. Because those are her friends. She hires, you know, people she Everybody knows. that's, yeah. Um, I commit to boosting the profile of black talent and connecting them with other opportunities for which they may be a good fit. Oh, man, Noel, come on. I will be, I mean, I, I get this, but I'm also like, again, this is all the assumption that, that she is going to have the power and the influence. No, she's not, but it's not in her hands. She's going to boost them somehow. But this but is that, kind of, that, that people are going to listen to her. Yes. But isn't this kind of... I, I'm going to say, isn't this kind of a white savior complex? Like, I'm going to help all of these people of color as atonement for my sins being in a role of leadership and having this large platform. Thrust upon me. Thrust upon me. I will also be making a donation to Writing the Other and the Milwaukee Freedom Fund. The final apology to members of the Shira fandom who feel hurt and betrayed. I am truly sorry you gave me your trust and I let you down. That's okay. You let a lot of us Shira fans down as soon as you released the season one of this show. Holy shit! How long does this? I don't. Go? I don't even care. <laughs> so uh, for those who felt compelled to fight on my behalf, please stay, take a step back and examine your own actions and biases. I ask you to commit to your own anti-racist education and to apologize to any fans of color you may have hurt in your defense of me. How about we apologize to all the male fans of She-Ra that you basically said were just watching the original because they wanted to fap to it? <laughs> yeah. Where's the apology? Where's the apology to all the original fans of She-Ra that you basically insulted, called them misogynists, whether they were male or female, told them they were, you know, racist and everything else under the sun uh, because they didn't like your, your version of the show instead of just being like, hey, you know what, new fans, I understand that you might, you really like the show and some people don't, but don't be, don't be antagonizing old fans because we're all, we're all fans of the same thing, we're in this together. I didn't see that being mentioned, but she makes a joke and she's going to, because she's afraid it's going to hurt her chances again jobs that is exactly what this is about let me help you help me that's, that's exactly what this what is about. she like again just the arrogance i am in a position of leadership as your leader 
you know, I'm you going check to, your privilege. <laughs> you check as your leader. You check your privilege. You assume, and maybe she look. Maybe she's already got another show in the works. Maybe she's already got another offer. Um, that's possible. But it's also very. This I found to be very presumptuous. Uh, and again, maybe it's just that you know the age and the people she surrounds herself with. But I would have been like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Next. Well, I like this last comment. That's me, and I'm a dick, and I have no problem. I can live well, with it. Well, it gets better. To other white creators who may find themselves in a similar position, you know, only you white people who are racist because no one else is, <laughs> I hope that you can learn and grow from this as well. It'll take time and continuous effort, but we must create industry where black voices are celebrated and uplifted. I agree. There needs to be more diversity. 100% we've been saying that. Um, you had a chance to promote a woman who was not white, who was black, and who has amazing ideas for a comic or for an animation, and you didn't do it. Um, also, I, I 100% believe that there should be diversity, but people should be as, should be all celebrated and all equal. I don't think certain people should be uplifted over others either, just because of your race. That's stupid. I don't care what color you are. This is, this is, uh, this is actually kind of hard to read because th this does, because really the, the motivation for all this, please don't cancel me Twitter. That's basically what it I is. I mean, she knows how the game works because she, she played the game. She helped invent the game. She helped invent the game. She played the game all the way to the top and the rules of the game that she helped create bit her in the ass. And well, now she's trying we've to. We've heard people in the animation industry that somebody wasn't well liked to begin with. Let's just leave it at that. I'm going to just leave it at that. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, I don't know if she's canceled or not. She's trying to keep herself from, from being canceled, but as far as we know, she or season six is not going to happen. Oh, and also learn biology. And, and yeah. And get over prom. Get over prom. <laughs> there are much bigger things to worry about in this world, uh, especially right now, but that is my opinion. And again, I'm a dick, so maybe I'm just completely... Uh, I'm just a sheer fan. I'm tired of shit. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm coming from. This so. comes from age. We're going to have all these 20 somethings be like, oh my God. And be like, talk off. to us in, in 20 years. Yeah. Talk to us in 20 years and we'll see. We'll see where you're at. Uh, you probably will be voting Republican by then. I doubt it. <laughs> we, don't even, we don't even know. Did you ever one Tracy Ullman skit? Uh, where she was talking to this room full of young people. She was, a, was at college or something. And she's like, who the hell am I kidding? You guys are all going to be conservatives by the time you're 40 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.